just a long lost look in your eyes brings out a love that I can't disguise so take me down to the places I've never seen oh don't you try to kill me with kind it's just your love that's driving me We're back here, and if you're late to the party, you might be surprised to see that Kongdu Monster actually won a game against SKT, which effectively, effectively makes it a best of one to decide whether SKT makes it into the playoffs or do Rock's Tigers make it in. And the weird thing is, you look at Kongdu's comp, you think about it and you're like, if this was solo queue, Kongdu Monster had the great comp, the counter picks, you get going, start to tilt some of those members, you're gonna win. And yet, it felt very, very active in this game. There was an organized defensive game plan. SKT could have rolled out, played defensively, gotten over the LeBlanc and Fiora laning picks, and just gone for team fights. Instead, they opted in to too much here. There was some uncharacteristic mistakes from some of their players. And Kongdu Monster off the back of three Infernals and a farmed Fiora took down the game pre-30 minutes for only their third game victory in 14 best of threes. It's hard to say, but that's the reality of what we just watched. Certainly some mistakes from the guy in the bottom left. He has been the carry for SKT. But if you watch this game, you might question it. You know, the best mid laner in the world, the best player. But he's got to step up for game three and be ready. Roach also having a fantastic game on the Fiora. Certainly at this point, the Baron and three Infernals helping him out in that play. But Kongu Monster actually win a game here. We thought it was a foregone conclusion. SKT, they're in. It's Kongu Monster, right? But I don't know. I don't know what to say after that game. We can say it's going to a best of one, Valda. Somehow this weird season for SKT, where they've dropped more games than they ever have before, is down to a best of one against Kongu Monster. And we can legit show a bit of poise, a bit of questioning about whether SKT can get over the line. They are massive favorites mm -hmm. for this series. After going over KSV and MVP in dominating fashion, this game where they gave away a jungle advantage and two soul lane advantages they didn't have an answer for, so they have to adjust their draft. The MVP here will be the Fiora. We saw in the picture in picture, the small pocket of Kongdu fans losing their mind. Yeah. They see a Kongdu MVP for the first time in a long time. His first MVP, and he gets it off the back of a 2-1-3 and three Fiora. But he certainly did his job. Two solo kills, a double kill, a one-on-two by himself to secure the victory. Had that not happened, maybe Kong Du Monster backs off and they're ahead, but somehow SKT clawed their way back. But because of his fantastic play at the end, it ends the game, and it brings us to game number three. As you mentioned, they're the big favorites, SKT, but it seems to be a matter of pressure and communication. There's so much pressure on SKT to win this series. They are the favorites by far. If you had the fan vote, it might be something like 90 to 10 or 95 to 5, but, you know, on any given day, a best of three against any LCK team, and anyone can win. And now it's the best of one. Now it's the format that draws the most criticism because there is no backup game. It's a best of one for their whole season. Will it be SKT missing playoffs? KSV and Rocks going through, or SKT limping over the line to force a best of three against KSV for their time in the playoffs in the wild card match. Amazing that we have this tension, and it sounds like Pick and Ban is ready. Yep, certainly is. So, guys, we're going to jump into Pick and Ban for the last time in this series. Now 
Now, you will notice there are no changes for SKT. They do not sub in anyone. They keep with the same roster. To me, what SKT need to do is just respect the fact that Kongdu Monster can play win lane, win game. Be a bit more respectful. I think the Talia priority will go down. I imagine Faker would love the Azir, something that can fend for himself in any matchup. Whereas Kongdu Monster, if they can find another way to get a winning mid lane matchup and attack Faker, that seemed to unsettle SKT as a whole, not just the great man in the mid lane himself. The monster will not walk into the Zaya either. And we see an Olaf ban. So I love to see that respect bans are being earned this series. The Zaya earned after game one. The Olaf and the pressure earned after game two. Now Kong New Monster can soon the rise. That would be a true flex pick and a takeaway from Faker's famous champion. Yeah. Would also mean that Faker couldn't uh, respond with a LeBlanc of his own against a Talia. And. Uh... You're pointing at it, it's the Zac for Blank. They take it away as a first pick over the side of Kongdu. And now they say, all right, we've seen your Jarvan, that worked. What have you got into Zac? And they will take the Zac for Rays. One of the few picks that the team actually has a decent win ratio on. So that's 3-0, it's gone 3-4, because sadly, that's just how the season has gone. But Zac has been very respectable. And Zac can potentially have a great matchup into the Varus. Let's see if Faker will lock in the Thresh for effort. Who has not jumped on the Thresh this season. Was an engaged support before he became kind of a disengaged support when we saw him in the Casper Cup and also this season. He is known for the engaged choices. The Thresh is what you want to answer the Zac in one pick. Certainly is. As we mentioned before, there's a small pocket of Kongdu fans that are still here in the studio, and they bring out the banner for game three because they know there's a chance it's actually going to happen. The Jin banned twice in a row, comes out this time. Soul will say, thank you very much. It's my time to shine. Legacy pick for Soul. Sort of pick that can be answered by a big tank line. They already have a Sejuani. So we'll see how much respect is shown by the side of SKT to the potential of the Jin, which got pretty heavy buffs over time. Now, if you want Thresh, you probably need it now. But SKT seem to be reaching instead. They want to play a global game, and they will put Tal on his most successful champion so far in spring season in the GP. Five and one on the season can allow them to play the side lanes very well. His ultimate is also one you can throw onto the curtain call and yeah. say, Jin, how many of these Anim barrages can you take before you fall low enough in the fight? Yeah, also offers them a chance to double ban out the top lane to give Tal an even easier laning phase. You think about picks like Camille, even the Fiora. But what are they going to go in terms of banning here? They've already taken away the Vlad. It looks like Camille will be the second choice. How spicy is Roach willing to get? I believe I saw him play some Riven into Gangplank Ooh. a few months ago. <laughs> the weird thing about Roach is I say he's a tank only player. I remember asking the team about Roach because he struggled for a long time. Every time he has been on Kongdu Monster through all the seasons, he has struggled. And I'm told he's a carry player. He just doesn't have the confidence to do it. This would be a time to hold your hand up to be counted after a great Fiora game. We do see the respect ban onto the Thresh. So the reliable disengage on the Zac is taken away. SKT looking for support, but also the mid lane. They will be giving Faker counter pick. So we'll see what Edge wants to take blind. Maybe just run the LeBlanc and say, what you got? Would uh, certainly be a statement towards the side of SKT, especially if they took a very aggressive counter match up into the top side as well. Kongdu Monster, will they make the statement here with their last two picks? What are they going to do? Another Fiora oh. for Roach seems like the answer. And a play around a winning top lane. The Gangplank does pretty well into Fiora, but gang we know that Fiora at two items and with some Infernals can go, and they're going to blind the LeBlanc. <laughs> I think they're going to do it. He knows that if he goes to Leah, Faker will play LeBlanc and bring it back after yeah. a few years. So for, sure. for now, it's just going to be the mind game. He shows the LeBlanc and says, all right, we'll lock in the rise. So they won't lock the LeBlanc. They are going to take the rise. It's not been a winning, but they are 0 and 8 on rise, but not necessarily because of Edge's own misplays. SKT looking down the tier list. Will they go the Cassiopeia? Another tier champion buff on the Archangel's changes. Hasn't been a big pick for Faker in this season. The Anivia can definitely be considered. But remember, Anivia is strongest against multiple tanks. However, it's a good laning matchup into the rise. You outrange him. You're able to use the wall for a lot of disengage and engage. It's not necessarily a team comp answer to what Kongdu Monster want to do. 
but it can always evolve to be if they force Kongdom Monster into a 5v5 team fight. I do like, though, you mentioned winning the lanes, and we saw it out of Kongdom Monster in game two. They won the lanes, and they won the game. They had the Olaf jungle to help out as well. This time, SKT says, you're not going to win the lane. We are the better team. We don't necessarily need the direct answer to your composition, but we are better players, and we're going to show you with our draft. They're not surrounding the top side like they did in game one. They weren't respectful around Kongdu's winning lanes. They lost in this game. The Fiora, slight advantage over the Gangbank, who will farm. We know how that goes. The Zac and Sejuani is basically a wash. Sejuani has most of the aggressive options when it comes to the earlier laning matchup, and it is a winning lane matchup for Anivia over Rise after six, when you can actually show some threat and put down the Glacial Storm. But this is Spicy Valdez. It's still a best of one, and crazier things have happened. We just saw Kongdu Monster win pre-30 minutes against SKT. Can they find their third match win of the season and take probably the most popular team in the world and dump them out of playoffs? Your first thought always is no. Your brain says no. But it's weird to say that Kongdu Monster is still in with a shot. We're going down to the wire. At least Baker still smirking after that last game. They went back to the drawing board. They went into the room. Everybody calms down, and they're ready. They've been in pressure situations before. Feels weird to say that a best of one against Kongdu Monster is a pressure situation, but they need to win 100% to make it into the playoffs, and certainly that's pressure enough. So let's see how it's going to go down A game number three between SKT and Kongdu Monster. Here we go, game number three, SKT, KDM. Something I didn't think I'd be saying, but Kongdu Monster able to pull it out and make things very, very interesting. As we mentioned before, Kongdu, they're not really fighting for anything. It, they, they're already in relegations. They're already in 10th place, but it's good practice. I suppose they're going to try their hardest, of course. And they do have that relegation playoff to play just after the LCK final, so probably somewhere in the second half of April. And when you're Kongdu Monster, a team that started this series on a 13-match loss streak, you probably don't get a lot of scrims with SKT or Kingzone or the top teams. You probably have to scrim with the bottom half and also the challenger teams. A lot of teams will go into break, uh, the teams that aren't in playoffs in a couple of weeks. So it's really all about getting as much good practice as possible. It's great practice. If they can beat SKT, they will have a lot of confidence going into the relegation matches against Griffin and likely Dumb One Gaming as well. So today, it's all about a best of one that could honestly really buff up their hopes for promotions. Whereas for SKT and most of the fans watching, it's about SKT's destiny. They're SKT. Surely they always make playoffs. Right now, it has to be decided in a best of one. Seeger wants to get the steal, and Blank says no. Thank you. I'll smite it. Um, we also had a little thing pop up about Rise. Did receive some nerfs to his E, less spread damage, but more damage in terms of numbers early on. And also his Realm Warp, 60 seconds across the board, is going to be longer on the cooldown up to 180. So it says, will Ryze still be used? And it looks like the answer here is yes. Still very safe pick, sustained damage from the mid lane. Edge hasn't had a lot of success on this pick, though. We mentioned it before. He's currently 0 and 8 on the pick. Is that his rise, or is that his team just failing? We'll, uh, we'll have to wait and see as this game goes on. I mean, if you think of notable rise blunders, you think of, say, Lava, for example, when he mm -hmm. realm walked his team into Doom in a series for Rockstar. You don't think of Edge. I think he's been fine on the rise, but he has been counterpicked by the Anivia. Looking for a lot of aggression onto Effort, but won't be able to get the Devour, does Kongdu Monster. And we finally see the Jin that's been banned against Soul quite a lot this week. A lot of respect being shown. Playing a lot in solo queue and has played 26 pro games on the Jin. It's always been in his wheelhouse. Power being respected after the buffs on patch 8.5. And you've got to say that SKT could have gone full tanks. They haven't really. It's not the squishiest team. It's not the tankiest either. But certainly, we see Soul get to the sort of AD values I saw from Sheriff last night in the AULCS playoffs, where it was at 800 AD. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, certainly. I mean, you mentioned we haven't seen Jin in quite a while. It's coming in because it's getting buffed, especially 
And he point five, lots of extra damage added to his kit. He can root everybody with his W now uh, on any of his damage, of course. And uh, he gets played in solo queue. He gets to play it in scrims, and people know that he's really good on the pick. I'm excited to see what he can do here. Definitely will have to deal with the Sejuani and an Alistair in his face, as well as the Cannon Barrage from DGP, as you mentioned earlier. Nice thing about Jin against the Varus is it's another pick into Varus. Varus is a blocker pick for a lot of AD carries. No one wants to run Stana into Varus anymore because of the Varus' laning priority. Jin is very, very safe. You can go Doran Shield. You don't have to go Doran Ring. Go for a gimmicky Rune page in order to get through the laning phase. The buffs have meant, made him viable again. So it's nice to see options in the AD carry role. We see Jinx and Jin run around the rift in the last week after being on very much the standard Varus versus Tristana for the whole of the season. So it is fun to see options for people like Sol. We're going to have to see Blank on the Sejuani once again. He looked okay on it in game number two. I wouldn't say it was necessarily his fault that they lost the game, but uh, still the question remains, can he carry a bit on the Sejuani pick, or rather is it, so, you know, carry on something that is not the Zack that Raze did pick away from him this game? Or even a simpler ask, have some early game plays on a champion yeah. that isn't the Zack, because the Jarvan, it was all after Raze got the first two kills in the game. The Sejuani in the previous game, nothing doing. So we're looking for a level six gank from Blank at this point to show us his straps and show us that it wasn't just the Zack that was able to get him over the line in four games in a row. I'm also interested to see the Fiora matchup because to me, Gangplank does very, very well against Fiora in multiple different ways. Raised in the mid lane on a ward. Faker Bait trying in. to bait it here. Let's see if he can do it. The stun is going to miss. No wall comes out. There it is, finally, in Tangency with his ultimate. Ray's taking a lot of damage, but has to flash over the wall. That was a nice bait from Faker. He knew he was about to hit level six from a minion dying, able to go in, get the flash away from Ray's. Now they can potentially invade the enemy jungle and know there's one tool that's down on the Zack, who uses his only other gap close to farm the minions. Let's talk about top lane for a little bit. If you think about the Gangplank's build, it's already basically pre-decided when you know you're in the Fiora matchup. Strictly forced into the Sterex Gage. Because with Sterex Gage, through the ultimate, you actually have a very hard time killing the Gangplank because the shield pops up. They're usually about exact damage, the percentage true damage coming through, and not able to take advantage of that when the Sterex Shield messes up calculations. So usually very safe in the side lane, whereas Fiora's solo kill pressure, we saw that in the previous game. 1v2 was even possible mm -hmm. for Roach in that game. Yeah, once you get to a certain point, it's part of the reason why Fiora does get picked. And even though it hasn't had too much success, Roach finds the answer, the formula. Risky, Raze is invading, yeah. remember his flash is down. That he is. SKT has been doing a good job of uh, warding. Let's see if the smite can come in. Blank is gonna get it. After all of that, Ray's also getting pretty low. He gets six from the blue buff, smite away as well. Blank was level five at the start of all that. We get the pull out to let us know that for now at least, there's gonna be no threat. Secret moving into position for the devour. Whoa, okay. Blank Didn't. trying to, you know, get him underneath the dragon damage. Now Soul in a little they bit of trouble. They know Devour's on cooldown. There it is, the Ignite ticking down. They need one more hit to do it, but here's Raze. Look at him turn it around. He dodges the Cannon Barrage too. Now effort getting low. He is going to be devoured up here. Do they have the damage? In comes Blank. The ground pound and the flash away. Now Blank trying to get frisky in the front, trying to lay down some damage. Bang, not enough to finish him off. Man, that was oh tense, boy. Valdez. That was close on both sides. Bang hit level six from that. They couldn't clear the minion wave in time. If Soul had pinged level six, there would have been answering kills, or at least a first blood for the side of Kongdu. So a lot happens. We have to also know this has implications in top lane, as now, if Raze goes top lane, there's no ultimate from Tal to clear the minions under turret. There's always a flow on effect when a global is used and Tal has used the cannon barrage. Baker comes up here, sees that the blue is not taken, was thinking, okay, Zack's not up here, and trying to poke his head up towards the top side, but sees Zack, and he backs off. Not gonna go for any Indivia ganks. 
Uh, the Anivia No Boots Gang. Oh, Famous yeah. play. <laughs> With uh, a catalyst and a tier only. It's one of those things where if you do that, it actually has a surprising success rate because the first thing the enemy top laner thinks is, no way he's going to gank. The you next level, next queue. level. Yep. Yeah. Where it's like, okay, I mean, this top laner is not thinking about me ganking as a Nivea ever. So I, I remember guess I'll I was, do it. I was ganked by a level three Karthus once and I was very <laughs> mad. I was in the bot lane and level yeah. three Karthus with no boots killed me. Those are always the best. And I was like, but that's not what this champion's for. It's uh, when the enemy mid laner doesn't respect your push and just lets you push into them. You're like, okay, I guess there's no warding. I, I'm going to gank as Karthus slash Nivea slash, you know, whatever very passive champion you got in the mid lane. Baker needs to go back to base, but has hit the part of the matchup where you have a lot of options against Ryze. Ryze is very medium range, and you're able to use the wall and reliably get the expanded Glacial Storm into the Frostbite trades that make you win. The RE that has always been there for the Anivia is very potent against the Ryze, so lane control will start to go the way of Anivia, who has a faster, faster push, especially after the pushing nerfs on patch 8.5 slow down the push from the Ryze. Mm -hmm. Picks up a lasting one. Gonna have some AP in his kit now. As the bottom lane hasn't been all too frisky. There's not too much action outside of that one fight we saw earlier where the junglers came in. But outside of that, looks like Bang and Effort are actually losing to the combination of Soul and Secret. Already Secret's, uh, or rather Soul's Jin is working out quite well. And they're looking for another gank in the bottom lane. Summon advantage is pretty big. Raze hasn't been spotted because he did not walk through the river from the top side. But you could argue Faker hasn't been spotted either. Yeah, he's finally spotted, but the chains of corruption come in. Now they're going to uh, TP down to try to help out Soul, who's taken so much damage, but it's not enough. Turning it around onto Bang, but now Edge in a lot of trouble. The kidnap, though, onto Bang, but not enough damage coming out onto him. The wall trying to keep in Edge, but he actually makes it over. Faker flashing the wall. He's trying to be the carry, but it's not enough. The last auto cannot take out Edge, and he will survive after all of that. Another even fight, 4v4, but nobody dies. Top has the cannon barrage to throw it in. Doesn't get anything, and Ray's going back in. Oh, hello. Is that enough damage, though? He needs to get the auto with the red. He flashes in, and he gets it. The first blood. He is going to trade his life after all of that. Kong the Monster certainly cannot follow up, but they do get the kill. And Gangplank also making his way down to the top lane. We could have a Fiora pushing top. A bit of a mistake coming through Fiora. Didn't teleport onto the Bloblets. Teleported defensively and then canceled it. She doesn't get a teleport advantage through all of this. They will give up the Ocean. You'd argue it's not worth it to get a kill for an Ocean this early. And the Ocean is a big buff to Gangplank and Anivia. Both of them very mana hungry in the laning phase. So while Roach can push up, and proxy for a little bit. I will take the SKT side of this trade, even though the feel-good moment for Kongdu fans is the first blood. So we take a deep breath, we think about what happened, because this was a very multi-layer fight. Effort held onto his pulverize, hoping to get the back end of all of this. Soul again, 100 HP, walking out of a cannon barrage. On the top side, a lot happening for the SKT side, but not enough damage to take down Edge, who gets the Realm Warp off, being able to count the CC. One more auto, all that is required, oh. but not enough damage. They walk out. This could have been the end of anything or everything. There was still a one for one after it, but the Ocean Drake goes the way of SKT. Yeah. Kong the Monsters, say what you will, but they're certainly creating a very entertaining series so far up against SKT. Whereas a more solid team would back off and say, okay, you can go back to the drawing board, you know, just not fight. We don't have to dive in again as Zach 1v5. But uh, Kongo Monsters say, no, let's do it. And, uh, certainly, they do give over the Ocean Drake. SKT feeling pretty decent after that trade. But if you are having a little bit of extra time in the top lane, we'll continue to get ahead in the CS. And it's all very frustrating for SKT fans, because if they had gone on to win this 2-0, they would have thought, OK, the Gauntlet run is on, we're ready to go. They could finally feel good about themselves in a season where it's been very lean times for SKT. Now, if they win, they're just limping over into the playoffs over Kongdu Monster, and everyone will say, you could hardly beat Kongdu Monster. How are you going to run the gauntlet? And maybe that'll empower them to keep on prepping, but they are definitely being drawn to the last against Kongdu Monster, and that is a, not a good sign because KSV into KT, into Afrika, into Kingzone is an insane schedule for any team in the world. 
And as you're talking, Roach does it again. This time there's no fight to interrupt him. And he's going to get the Rift Herald very early at 13 minutes into this game. Has a little bit of help from Rays at the end, but he uses that pushing advantage in the top side against GP to just head on over. There was no vision. And so they hand that one over to Rays. We'll see what lane they want to push. I would suspect either the top or the bottom side. Very interesting. Look at the build coming through from Bang. Now, he hasn't necessarily fully pigeonholed himself into rushing the wit's end, but it looks like a wit's end rush when you look at Damage coming through from the enemy jungler and the rise, it makes sense. Could just be the Negatron to respect all the Rome's bot lane. But it's not going to be the Rage Blade complete at the same time, at least, with all the gold invested into the Negatron. Maybe he wants to fight earlier, have the extra on-hit damage. Things changing around the Rift. Boots 2 has always been a rush on Soul. Won't be the Swifties that were the poor tenant of any build on Jin. It's going to be the Merc Treads this time. Uh-oh. Never mind. It is effort with all of his summoners, but... But it's Rays? They with see it, yeah. The Rift Herald, they know Varus is in base. They continue to push. We haven't looked at the turret HP. I'd imagine it's relatively healthy. And it is. How much damage can they do? Effort's leaving, so they've given this one up. Yeah, relatively is the correct term. Healthy, but not healthy enough. As they split the gold over to Soul and Secret in a very early... Uh, turret here, first blood turret given over to Kongu Monster before 15 minutes, going to take a big lead in the gold off the back of that, about 1.3 thousand. And again, 15 minutes into game three against SKT, Kongu Monster have a gold lead. Things I did not expect to be saying on the final day of the season, regardless of how many matches I'd seen, given the difference in levels historically between these two orcs. So I feel like SKT. Very much in a great position to take over this game, but Kongu Monster are winning the early game. The Essence Reaver now finished onto the Jin. I'm excited to see if the Hermaban status of the Jin against Soul is going to be worth the respect that it's been shown so far. That's the big pick that Kongu got in game number three that wasn't available to them earlier. Effort, the cow bait here, trying to come in to the control ward, but Kongu Monster not biting the bait. There's no objective over here. It's really about soul, but it's going to slow them down. Best effort could have hoped for there was a trade of flashes, which he would love against the Jin, but the trap being there, and there was no way for him to do that. Hongnu Monster clearing in mid lane. Extra AD ratio on the Q makes it a, him a bit more competitive, the Jin, to push through a mid lane. Side lane, everyone's piling in to kill the Rise. Might be able to do it if they land the Sejuani ultimate. We're not going to see that as 3v1 on Tatal is going to be pushed back. Looks like the bottom side fight also did not happen. And Blank did hold on to his ultimate. It was a very long dive back there. And Kongdu Monster used that pressure to take another turret. And it's a big thumbs up moment for Kongdu because they get the cannon barrage defensively to stop a dive. And they get the turret. That was the first objective to trade up in terms of turrets. So. They're able to blow a very important cooldown, and they get the turret they were set up for anyway. And somehow, Roach's Fiora is the big win condition today, and they're thinking about diving still. Things you never thought you would say. Certainly, Roach has been down on the bottom of the tier list of top laners, but he every wants time. to prove everybody wrong. Literally everybody that's made a, a tier list about top laners does not have him high up, and uh, he has been he's in looking good in the series. LCK Spring three years in a row, and he would have been my 10th place top laner, maybe even 11th if there were some good top lane subs. He has struggled, Valdez. So for him to show on the carry, something he never has played reliably in the past, we're seeing a new Roach. Is it two years too late? Not to the Kongnu fans if they're able to beat SKT today. Yeah, you never know. Maybe off of the back of this win, he gets confident and begins to carry. It's uh, kind of funny to say, but certainly the bigger storyline would be SKT falling to Kongdu Monster. The game isn't over, but certainly SKT is a bit behind. That Ocean Drake was good early on, but Kongdu Monster, they end the laning phase. And even if SKT have control of this next Drake, it's another Ocean. The RNG not going in their favor. The triple Infernal going to Kongdu, the double Ocean to SKT. Double Ocean, decent, but at 18 minutes getting the second one, you don't feel fantastic, as you mentioned. Race is walking up. This is risky. Yeah, he's just walking straight into them. He's going to use okay. that to, to get Baker to the back line, and he's forced to get out of here. Doesn't really do much after all that, as uh, he's forced to flash away anyway. 
has the teleport as well, and Tar will go top lane, trying to interrupt him, will not be able to do so. They don't get turret damage, we take another deep breath. Remember that every time they fully engage, the wall can completely change the battlefield and make a seemingly one team fight for Kongdu Monster a losing one. So we have to be very quick to pivot Valdez when it comes to who is most likely to pick up the win in the 5v5s. Roach a second time, cancels his teleport. He's working on Trinity Force. He's still loaded with gold. Oh boy. This is, uh, it's neck and neck between Kongdu Monster and SKT in game number three. Our 89th match of the LCK 2018 Spring. It's as close as ever. They're looking for another dive onto Tall here. The defensive cannon barrage once again, but they're fighting through. And here's Raze as well saying, hello, I'm going to pick up the kill. They're going to give that one over to Rose. But Blank. can they get into the back line here? They're going to get on top of Soul. No devour just yet. Finally comes on in. Trying to get him to safety here. Baker comes Baker. Too. He's got his ghost on. He wants to get the wall. But this time, Ray's going to jump into the back line. Varus is going to stand tall against them. Ray's now TPing on in. The wall, they're trying to kill Zach here in the end. Nope, TP to get them. The devour to get Kongdu Monster out of dodge. At the end of all of that craziness, a one for one. Wow, OK. And you have to look at the cost in terms of summoners when it's a very extended dive like that. Teleport and Ghost, not going to be big. No flashes blown. So in the general, it's just a one for one. Fiora will back away. See how much gold she was holding on to. Not enough for a Trinity Force. So isn't able to take over the side lane in the way like she'd want to. Soul also putting together gold. It was a wit's end rush from Bang. He is looking for as much power early as possible. Rage Wave might be a third or fourth item as it will be in the future as we move on to 8.6 and it becomes a percentage scaling item rather than a flat AP and AD item attack speed as well. Rageway is going to take a different route. It's going to be kind of the death cap multiplier to an on-hit build rather than the core of a on-hit build. So Bang working with what he's got. He's trying to get the power. He knows they cannot afford to give up the mid game like they did in game number two. This game is getting crazy. Kong the Monster still ahead. At about the 20 minute mark as we cross that here. Next streak is going to be Infernal. So certainly one that the two teams will fight over. Are they going to have an answer to Roach in the top side? It still sounds funny to me. It's it's strange to say with my mouth, but he's 1-0 on the Fiora and he's pushing him in. We'll see what he can do. He has transferred down into the bottom side. And they've sent the rise up to the top side. So they're executing a 1-3-1 for now. Teleport advantage on the rise, so on the Fiora in just a couple of seconds. So that's why the Fiora is in bot lane. Rise has to be so careful because Sejuani, even Anivia coming out of the darkness and putting down a wall can basically kill him. So for now at least, going to be very defensive. Defensive build also did not go for Rod of Ages, which we see on most of our Rise players. Just happy to opt into the Abyssal Mask this game. Two items onto the Jin. New build we see in Korea exclusively. No more Yomus. Out with the Lethality. In with Essence Reaver, Rapid Fire Cannon, Infinity Edge as the core build. SKT looking to make a push happen in the mid lane as they notice Kongdu Monster is a little bit split up, but they don't really have enough pushing power. And Soul's doing a good job of pushing back on the gym. The Q bus, the AD ratio as the game goes on from level 9 onwards, means that Jin does a decent job pushing when that used to be the biggest weakness of a Jin was if you put him in the mid lane, he got pushed in by basically everyone short of Ezreal. So giving him a bit more wave clear is helpful. Still gonna be mostly about the fourth shot when you go a build like this rather than the ultimate. That will do plenty of damage as well. Hungry Monster being respect respectful. They know where they're strong around Roach. They also know that one mistake could definitely snowball this game away. I just love the fact that with nothing to play for, Jin Air upset the Rocks Tigers, likely putting them out of the playoffs. And then today, in the same scenario for Kongdu Monster, they're fighting to the absolute last, the final game of the season they'll play, desperately looking for their third match win after so many defeats. You just know that Kongdu Monster, there's, there's not much on the line, as you say, but to take out SKT and to be the spoilers would be fantastic to them. They would love it. Be just uh, something to give their team some more popularity in a way. Say, hey, Kongdu Monster was the team that denied SKT playoffs with their crazy 2-1 victory in the last series. But we'll see. They're going to go on to Seoul here. Nice devour. Watch for the flash. wall. Watch the wall. No wall comes out here. Going to bang some heads together is Raze as Faker. 
gonna engage once again onto Raze. They're gonna blow everything onto this Zack, who tries to get away. Does kidnap Blank in, but there's no further damage. Edge coming from the left side, trying to go 1v4. He's done for. There's the wall once Secret. again. The stun coming on in. Secret, but effort coming from behind, denying him the devour. A great play from our rookie support. The SKT fans gonna cheer as they win that fight in big numbers. SKT really want Baron from this play. They should start it, you would imagine, but they're trying to deal with the Fiora in the side lane. They won't be able to get the Baron. That's so important for the side of Kongdu Monster. Raze in the front line, had Flash and Ultimate available and thought he'd be fine. There was no time to use the Let's Bounce because he was chain CC'd and killed. Well, any of that could happen. Watch the replay through all of this. They were baiting to get the engage onto Sol when he went for the auto attack on the very low health turret. Able to disengage. This could have been the end of everything, but they look for the pick. The wall finally used. Faker wasn't in position to use it onto the Tom Kench. Great Flash and Pulverize as well. They're not able to pick up the Baron from this play. It's a feel-good one. It gets them more map control that they did not have before because of the power of the Fiora in the side lane. They also know a lot of summoners are down, but the ultimate prize in the Baron eludes them for now. Certainly, you can see some of the weaknesses out of Kong Du in a moment like this. Ray's not respecting the wall range out of the Anivia. Probably doesn't play against it all too often compared to some other picks. And then also Edge coming in and being forced to flash away just to try to survive, but then eventually going down. Means that Kong the Monster, they're ahead, but they have had trouble ending games in the past. So now with a winning fight over to SKT, they close a bit of that gold gap and things are looking a lot more even. I really like the Ghost from Vegas. Used a couple of times, hasn't got value. I'm saying why Ghost on the Anivia? It allows him to side lane on the lane closest to the objective that SKT is going to fight for, and then goes to the objective to be in position. So teleport Anivia doesn't work because she needs setup time, but ghost Anivia is a pseudo teleport in that way in that you just have to have the right lane assignment of putting her next to Baron when you're playing around Baron, the Infernal Drake when you're playing around the Infernal Drake, and then she can ghost to close the distance. So that's the theory there for the Faker. Yeah, teleporting in as in the Nivea is generally not a, a fun moment. you got to be away from the enemy team. As you mentioned, that setup time is very important. Um, SKT, they were sitting up towards that Infernal Drake, but they were very scared about Roach coming from the right side. And they're going to try to engage here. The ultimate will go wide onto Secret now. Problem for Secret is he doesn't have a QSS. If he has QSS, he can face check and put down Vision. It's actually building towards a couple of different items here between the... Aegis and the Kindle Gem, just trying to buy power and early stats. QSS is sometimes a luxury, sometimes a necessity. For me in this game, it is going to be a necessity. But if he doesn't have to be there, and if he doesn't have to put down vision, maybe he can get away with it. They're face checking and SKT lying in wait. Konga Monster playing very careful here. They does know have they the have... Should mention yeah. he has the cleanse. So yeah. cleanse can still be very useful in this game, but. There's so much chain CC that you worry plans might not even be enough. Yep. Fiora, Roach still doing a good job. They, Kongdo Monster, they're playing well around the pressure of Fiora, and they know that the Sejuani has her ultimate down. They start off the Infernal Drake here. Remember Cannon Barrage available. Tal pushing into Rise in the top lane. They're starting up the Infernal, so they've actually leashed it to 50% health. There's a Cannon Barrage taking that damage and the TP committed to from Tal. They want this Infernal. Kongdo Monster trying to disengage, but they're gonna re-engage here. TP coming in from Edge now. Looks like Effort gonna have to give his life up for that infernal drake a pretty good trade after all for skt what does it mean though there's no tracker's knife so you know you have a time to get vision control around the map when the enemy's support is down roach can rush the bot lane as well but infernal for his support still feels good for skt the elder is looking more and more ominous as we will have a fourth spawn Another Inferno will be spawning this game. We've seen this before, the Rise Fiora duo push. The piggyback that yeah. Pongdu tried in their last series. It didn't work, we should mention, against BBQ, so they will disengage. Yeah, it's hard to push into uh, a gangplank. You can't really uh, hold him down as the Rise. You gotta dive the turret. He has a really nice wave clear, so certainly one of the harder champions to do that strategy against. Kongdu Monster, we mentioned a bunch of good things for SKT, but still some good things for Kongdu. They still have the 2-0 Fiora, who just picked up the components to a Bloodthirster third. 
and Rochi was the MVP of game two. I could certainly see him popping off once again if it gets late enough in game three. Very hard to make it about lane priority like it was in game number two, where it was the win lane win game. And they just had so much power so early that SKT were in a bad situation whether they ganked or whether they tried to play as five. So in this particular game, the backup team fighting, we do see Roach team fight more than most Fioras. You are against an insane amount of CC. He's gone Ninja Tabi into Sejuani, Anivia, Alistair, and Varus. And what does that tell you? It tells you he wants to be as far away from those four people as possible and play in the Gangplank lane. So unless he's able to come in and clean up with a lot of damage done by Soul and Edge, maybe there's a cleanup. Speaking of playing ups. Oh boy, Soul gets himself into trouble again. There's the cleanse flash, but he doesn't need to be there. He gets caught the second time. The first time it was for the turret, understandable, but this time just hanging around the river trying to get vision, and they will pay dearly for that. Biggest upside for the side of Kongnu Monster is Bang doesn't have Rage Blade. We mentioned he went for a one item power spike in the wit's end, a bit cheaper than the Rage Blade. Didn't want to be sitting on a pickaxe and a blasting one for an extended time, but it does mean the damage output from Bang is lower than basically every other Varus that we've seen. I was not going to expect the Roaches here, who is overstaying, but goes for the prediction play and gets it anyway. Yeah. Good read there. There were some question mark pings. You know, maybe he had backed off into the jungle, but just being safe is always the good play, especially in a game like this, while not going to interrupt the Elastic Slingshot this time around. Flash and Cleanse down on Secret, but Summon is up on everyone else. And now they're going for the piggyback again. It's the way they like to go. Yeah, Edge doesn't have his TP, they're going for he dive. has it. Here we go, the Grand Challenge is going to be procced up against the wall, going to deny it for now, but here comes Ed from behind, and they get the kill. Trying to dive the mid lane turret is SKT, but it doesn't work out for them. And look at this, Effort taking a lot of damage, has to ultimate away. Great play for Kongdu Monster, after all. This is something that SKT should have expected. They tried the piggyback again and again in recent series, but this time they're going to pick up an inner turret. You and I know all about the piggyback. It's both TV and OGN, yeah. <laughs> an old favorite of ours. But the piggyback strategy of sending two teleport users to the same lane, even though Edge's teleport was on cooldown, gets them the inner turret. Yora probably going to have most of a oh. bloodthirst, and oh boy, we're you going all in. You mentioned the ghost on Faker. Kongu Monster saw it too. There's no TP. Faker trying to make his way on over. Will they commit to this is the real question. Blank, he's got an opportunity to steal. Change of Corruption's coming in, and the Force Flash out of Blank. Bang, rather, he is able to get out of there. And Kongu Monster, now they just want to get out. They cannot fight this, but getting low is raised. The Ignite ticking. Is it going to kill him? So, so close, but it's not going to do it, it looks like. They're out of the fight. Does SKT turn onto the Baron from this? Their Baron damage is decent because they have Blade the Ruin King on the Varus, but otherwise, they don't really have a secondary damage dealer as Gangplank can't be grouped. So they don't trust in their Baron speed. And that does mean that Ray's able to heal up. Please face check it again. Yep, someone has to face check. It's going to be Ray's this time. Up against the wall, it's going to be taken out. Certainly a huge pick for the side of SKT as they get the jungler away. This should mean Baron, but SKT are continuing to bait. They join the ultimate. Oh Soul gets a boy. huge chunk. That's the huge barrel onto it, and it means that Secret is also going to pay for it with his life. SKT should start the Baron now. We got Roach down the mid lane, trying to make him pay for it. Might be able to get this mid lane in her. Try and get a turret, but that's just two inner turrets in exchange for Baron. Hungry Monster make big hits around the Baron, but SKT outthink them throughout the majority of it. Hungry Monster's Baron plays have not been something we praised in this series. I thought they might just go for the 50 50, but they tried to make the control turn. The turn doesn't work, and now SKT have Baron. What does it mean for the game? Because it doesn't mean much for the gold lead, Valdez. It's only 200 lead to Kongnu Monster. It means that Kongnu Monster are going to try what worked for them. They're going to go for another piggyback play in the bottom side, but this time it looks like SKT has read it well. And Effort he, coming down. He has ult up as well. And he does, and here's Blank as well. Nice, nice post. post. Okay. Can use the Realm Orb to get away. They're just going to try to walk it. Ghost from Anivia. Here comes Faker trying to get that wall down. They're looking for Edge here. He, he doesn't, doesn't have, have flash. flash. Oh, he misses it. And now trying to engage as it looks like finally they will get Roach. And now Secret forced to cleanse away from this one. Should not be able to get out of there. And SKT, they're beginning to roll with the punches and they're getting ahead from it. One by one, the members of Kongdu Monster fall. The moment they saw Alistair, they could have just disengaged. 
They went for the pick, which was never going to happen. They give up the Infernal. Feels like the neutrals are where the big lead is for SKT. They have four Drakes, including double Infernal. They still have the Baron for two minutes. Hongnu Monster need to force SKT into team fights, otherwise this game should end. They're getting a huge Baron power play, and we're still two minutes left on the Baron. They have so much time to make even more of it. Let's see where they decide to go. The mid lane inner turret is going to go down with Tall pushing in the bottom lane. But how far will they go? Are they willing to dive into the mid side? Still Secret is down as well as Roach. The push Wall. continues. Wall still massive on the rise. It just to be so respectful. This flash is up. Tom Kench back so they can push up a little bit more aggressively than before. And a root effort here. Another wall that Secret can always devour over. On to Soul. Ray's just trying to be an annoyance on the side. Won't actually be considering an engage. Fiora clears out the minion wave and is looking to groups level 18 for both GP and Fiora. But like we mentioned, Roach is not set up for a team fight. So being the hero here, eventually able to take out the bannered up minion. And trying to be the sniper too. His W's are going to begin to hurt as we get later on in this game. But SKT, they really want to get this. There's the wall again, but another devour on point. Chains of Corruptions locks them down. The inhibitor will also go down. The flank getting low. It's not enough. The secret is going to pay for it. Now, Raze is going to be stunned up, and another kill going to go over to SKT. Will they continue pushing? Still 51 seconds remain. It's the reality of the comp. They can't 5v5, but they're trying. Rogue's going to disappear once again, and they're going to catch Edge as well. It looks like the dream for Kung Fu is not going to come true as an ace comes through onto the side of SKT and the TP will come in. It was so, so close. The pressure was there, but SKT, they beat it and they will get into the playoffs in fourth place with the win over Kung Fu Monster, two to one. High drama in the second last match of LCK Spring 2018. SKT creep over the line, but it's not the triumphant inauguration of their playoffs. It was only just Valdez and they still have a motley crew of the best teams in the world to beat. If this is not to be their victory, this is the minimum you would expect from SKT. Qualifying for playoffs, the fans will say they did it last year, but this has been their worst return in LCK history. They dropped 23 games in LCK Spring 2018. 23 best of ones, more than an entire NALCS season of games. Meanwhile, their worst return previously was 15 games. Job is done on the day, but they know the victory on the season is far from done. They can smile, they can reset. They have six days to get back in form. They will face KSV in a best of three to decide who goes on to face KT Rolster. Chances of a telecom war, best of five, increase. But SKT just about did it. Kong New Monster. Win lane, win game one, one in game two, but when it came to game number three, they had to group with the Fiora, their Baron play wasn't clean, and SKT deserving victors on the day. Definitely some fun storylines. SKT barely defeat Kelmdu Monster to make it into playoffs. KSB, they make it because Jin Air upset Rocks Tigers, and either team that makes it up to face KT in our first best of five is going to have a very hard matchup, but also some struggles on their way to get there. And uh, we're going to take a last look at the replay. Nicely done by SKT in the end. You notice Como is very happy. Everybody in the SKT booth very, very relieved after this one. They're able to close out the game. Roach can't do anything. He's where all the gold is, Valdez. Ninja Tabi, Fiora. It's a lockdown team. Tries to poke, tries to distract. Not able to do that. SKT. Rush through the GUI center. They don't worry about the Fiora on the side. Finally able to get the important picks. Fiora, well, she went into the fight and died instantly. Nice engage from effort. They take out the rise. They take out the game. This means that Rox Tigers are eliminated. So sorry to Rox fans who would have been watching on very interested in this particular match. They will not be able to make it after a great season. They fall at sixth. KSV versus SKT. Samsung Galaxy versus SK Telecom T1. It's not Beijing anymore. It's going to be the first match of our playoffs, and only one of those teams can go forward. It's going to be a very hype best of three to start off our playoffs eventually. But uh, now everything is set. We know who's playing in every match, uh, at least uh, who's in each place waiting for the next team to come up. We will have our 90th game coming up next, guys. It will be a precursor to the playoffs, the Afrika versus KT match to end the night. But uh, 
SKT, they do it. It, it was very interesting best of three. Kongdu Monster nearly upsetting them, but SKT pull through. And my question to SKT fans who will be listening now, relieved that they've made playoffs is, what is good enough for LCK Spring 2018? They were right down the bottom. They went on a big losing streak, a historic one. How far do they have to get to live up to your fandom, to live up to your expectation? Making the playoffs was a very outside chance, and they've done it. They've clinched it right on the final day of the season. Do you need to beat KSV to be happy? Do you have to be the champions to be happy? Or is it somewhere in between? That is the question to keep in mind, because it's already a minor miracle that SKT have made it to the playoffs. They make it to the playoffs with a 50% win rate. 23 wins, 23 losses is enough for SKT to make playoffs. They do get a chance to throw it all out the window and just succeed and win every match one after the other. But it's a tough ask for a team that has only really gotten it together in their last two series and then went to three games against Kongdu Monster. Certainly as an SKT fan, you would expect them to defeat KSV. It was a clean 2-0 victory, but it's playoffs. Anything can happen with the pressure on the line of the wild card match that won last best of three to see who faces off against KT. We'll see how SKD deals with the pressure, how KSV deal with, you know, uh, just barely making in thanks to Jin Air defeating Rox, basically, not even of their own right making it in. Uh, it's going to be an interesting one, that best of three, certainly. I'll be watching on, but uh, we're going to see the last MVP from SKT. We'll see who it's going to be. I I'm not sure who it would be from this side. I feel like it was Maybe more effort? of a team effort but blank okay. two zero and ten certainly had a pretty nice sejuani game wasn't necessarily as active as some fans would want but he was clean and clean on the sejuani is a start blank is firming as the starter for playoffs it seems like the blossom experiment it seems like the wolf in the jungle experiment are both put to one side and they will be preferring the, ex the experience coming through from blank second mvp on the season he'll probably get the zack at least one time in a best of five Let's see if he can put together the rest of his champion pool. We know he's in form. He's top 10 in solo queue. But people will believe it when they see it with Blank. He was good in game number two, a deserving MVP. Well, guys, that was a crazy series. I'm going to hand you over to G-Sun to help out with the translation of our two MVPs in our interview. Finally, they got the last ticket for the playoffs, picking up 2 2 1 victory against Kongdu Monster. And today, let's hear from the MVP players of SK Telecom, Bang and Blank. Congratulations on the win. After the game, I saw that you were holding your heart like it was such a hard match for you. I think after losing the game too, I got shivers. I was worried that I might lose out the third one again. So, yeah, I was worried, but I want to thank Blank and other players for performing so well. You seem really nervous. Well, not like the finals, but yeah, I did feel nervous going into the game. It could be our last game of the series or the split. So yeah, those kind of thoughts in mind make me a little bit more shaky. Yeah, and Blank, you also seemed a little bit nervous on the screen. How did you feel? Yeah, just like he said, after losing at the game two, I was really nervous about losing the third game. So moving on to games, to game one. Do, do you even remember the first game? Oh, when I got the third kill, well, no one was actually attacking the opponents, and they were helping me to pick up the kill, so I was really happy. It was my first experience. Then let's check out some highlights from the game one. Well, I knew Alista didn't have flash, but I think he went too deep into our position. 
And this one. Well, I think I did a little mistake over here because I used flash before my ultimate. So, yeah, I have to say that was my mistake. And Blank, you did awesome work on your J4. Well, I see the angle coming to use my ultimate, so it was lucky for me. And you guys did mention the game too. So, how did you guys deal with the pressure going into the game three? Well, I think we could win the game too, but we did make mistakes during the team fights. So we just said, let's get rid of our mistakes. So during the break time, the coach told me what kind of mistake we made and what kind of solution we can bring up in the games. So Blank, how was the game three? It was a very important match for us, so I tried to focus as much as I could. Then let's check out the clips. Can you give us some comments about this? Well, I just knew that I was going to win the team fight if I land my ultimate. Yeah, so I played a little bit more aggressive. Blank, I think you are back on your high notes. So is the old SK Telecom coming back? I think all of our players are back in their high notes. So I want my fans to be expect a little bit more from our performance for the playoffs. And Bang, you have been consistent throughout the season. Well, nowadays, yeah, I think I became a little bit better than the beginning of the season. So yeah, I'm a little bit more confident than before. And I heard that you made it into the first rank in the solo queue, so I'll be looking for your better performance in the playoffs. And we want to invite Koma, the head coach of SK Telecom, to this interview and share our talk. It was a hard split for SK Telecom, right? It was really hard for us to make it into the playoff spot. I want to thank all the fans for supporting us throughout the bad and the goods, and also our SK Telecom team for being so supportive for our players and also our coaching staff to make our players look better in the games. And even the last game, I could see that, that they were a little bit nervous and shaking in the games, but I'm happy that they did overcome that kind of pressure and finally pick up the win. Yeah, I can see that it was a rough season for you as a head coach of the team. What kind of thoughts came into your mind after the game two? And after losing the game three, how did you feel? After winning the game three, sorry. Well, I just thought that the end hasn't come yet, so I wanted to stay focused and also I know that our fans are not satisfied with this result, so I want to make it into the playoffs and into the semifinals and into the finals. So I want, I'm sure that the fans are already so satisfied with SK Telecom's results. And I can say what helps the most for the players and the team is the support from the fans. So we prepared a present for you, Koma. 
So we would like to give you a new notepad, hoping that you can put up only victorious notes on your notepad from now on. And it's the start of the playoffs. Would you like to say any last message for your fans? We finally made it to the playoffs, so I want to make our opponents feel the same pressure that we felt for today. And I want to show our fans back in the higher place in the LCK. Thank you for all the support. And bang and blank. You guys have a long journey to go. Any last message? Well, we got our time to go back to the drawing board and prepare for the matches, so we're going to work really hard and trying to be ready for the playoffs. So we'll, I want to ask for continuous support from our fans. And I also want to thank our teammates, our SK Telecom team, our coaching staff for being so support, supportive and always going through the season as a whole team. So we'll be expecting great performance from you guys, SK Telecom. And Blank, you want to add on to that? Well, so we are on the fourth place. So we want to show the process of improvements throughout the playoffs. So it was a really calm interview from SK Telecom. We can feel the burden and pressure that SK Telecom has been going through. So I want to congratu congratulate once again SK Telecom on picking up their victory. So this will conclude the first match of the series, and I'll pass it back to our casters. Thank you. Certainly looking calm after winning this one. Was close. Wasn't expecting SKT to lose a single game or for it to be even close at all. But Kongdu Monster showed up to play, surprised SKT a little bit, and they had an interesting best of three to end the decider matches of uh, who makes it to playoffs after all. I've learned that expectations are a dirty word when it comes to LCK Spring 2018. Oh, yeah. You just have to hang back <laughs> and let the season wash over you. As SKT, after everything, have finished fourth. That is actually a very respectable position on the ladder, given everything that's happened, given the struggle they went through earlier in the season. With SKT, there is always that expectation of more. Is it going to be the grand final again? So hard to know. There's so much League of Legends to be played, and every opposition they face is going to be formidable. But SKT on this day could only do what was left open to them, beat the team in front of them. It was a struggle against Kongdu, but now they get five days to really use the world-class preparation they've always had, try to fully understand the patch and fully understand their next opponent. They will be playing KSV in a world final rematch. It's only a best of three. There's only so many adaptations that can be done. And does SKT have their final five decided? Because there's no guarantee that these five players will start in the playoffs. Certainly seems like they will, especially after no change up in game three against Kongdu, but hey, you never know. So we'll have to wait and see. Kongdu Monster, they were ahead in this game, but they kind of lost it. It's uh, more of what we expected out of Kongdu Monster, you know, just some of their downfalls and why they haven't had mu much success in LCK so far. And uh, it was three short games. SKT finally won in the end in 35 minutes, and they do make it into the postseason. That's what it says up at the top. After SKT did look good against KSV, I would predict them to win, but uh, it's, gonna, it's not going to be an easy matchup against KSV. So they move in front of KSV because they own the head-to-head. -head. It's match score, both of them at nine matches. In fact, three teams at so nine close. match wins. Then after that, it is game score. Both KSV and SKT are at 50% win and loss. So SKT, having beaten KSV both times, lead in the game score and the head-to-head, -head, and thus we'll have side selection 
Very interesting to see if it'll be the red side that seems favored recently, or the blue side when we do get to that big match one week from yesterday. So six days from today, on Saturday, we will have that best of three. We're gonna get the schedule going, and of course, we're ignoring our next match and just looking at the playoffs. 31st, 5 p.m. over at OGN. SK Telecom versus KSV. We've come so far since Beijing, but only one of those teams can go forward. And then look at the three teams you have to face. KT have been up and down. Afrika have only been on the up. And King Zone Dragon X are pretty bloody good. So it is quite the gauntlet that you'll have to run. It's pretty intense because I feel like every step represents a real feel in the in the skill between every team, right? Afrika, I feel like, have approved they're better than KT. Kingzone have proved they're better than everyone else. And then the two teams at the bottom seem to be the only teams that really, you know, scuffle with these upper teams. So it's, yep. a, it's a very competitive playoff. And the cute thing is that actually the winner of KSV versus SKT goes to... Uh, Rift Rivals, and the loser does not. That's actually a little cute thing there. You what actually qualify <laughs> for an international event with a best yeah. of three. So that's an extra little lining. But guys, give them the time. It's actually 7.42, so we'll start a little bit late, probably just after 8 p.m., but largely on schedule and a six-second match. Yeah, it's going to be KT versus Afrika after about 20, 25 minutes, so we'll see you then. SK Telecom T1의 경기는 SK Telecom T1의 승리로 끝이 났습니다. 스플릿 초반 정말 달라진 모습을 보여줬던 콩두 몬스터. 아쉽게도 SK 잔류에는 실패를 하게 됐는데요. 콩두 몬스터는 승강전을 앞두고 있습니다. 승강전에서 멋진 모습으로 썸머 스플릿에서 다시 한번 만날 수 있기를 기대해 보겠습니다. 저희는 20분 후 KT 롤스터와 아프리카 프렉스의 경기로 다시 돌아오겠습니다.